gentlemen, and welcome to Skip Elo Looks at Hollywood. Today's guest on the show is the English-known international actress, Miss Hermione Badley. Also, the gentleman who wrote the book on the life of Catherine Hepburn and Earl Flynn, Mr. Charles Heim. Here he is, man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. Hermione, age eight. Stage, I mean, you're only eight years old. And look at you today, darling. <laughs> How many years have you been in the I theater? Can't look at myself these days. <laughs> I mean, you well, start. It goes on and on. Then I, I suddenly stop. <laughs> I mean, the theater, eight years old. The family, the, the well, mother, the father, tell me. what. what? I was eight years old when I joined Angela at a dancing school. Uh -huh. My sister Angela, and she was a few years old. And the men, we would just went straight ahead. We never, never did any auditions or anything. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Very interesting. But, but, um, but you, your mother's way. French? Your mother's French? My mother was, yes, my mother was practically wholly French. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Her mother was French and uh, yes, but the entire family wasn't French at all. No, no, your, mo your father was English. Mm -hmm. Yes, but tell me something. Room on the top. I got to get right into that. Yeah. You were uh, nominated? Yes, I was. There, for uh, yeah. the award. Mm -hmm. That was in 1976. Oh, I'm not 76. 76, darling. It's not, that's not that long ago. <laughs> But Lawrence Harvey, oh, yes, yes. Lawrence Harvey, one of the great actors, I think he is just... Yes, I think he was very, very good. Very but you had a lot to do with his career. Oh, yes, I did. I introduced him to Glenn Barn Shaw, my brother-in-law, who ran the Shakespeare Theatre uh -huh. in Stratford for I see. 13 years. How old was he? He was very young then? He was... About, I think he was about a year older than uh, Angela, uh -huh. but he wasn't very young when we all sort of got yeah. together, but you mustn't start talking about I, this, because I don't even remember things. Yeah, but tell me, Lawrence or Harvey, I mean, there's, like you were very Lawrence? close, you were very close well, to Lawrence. Yes, because I thought he was absolutely brilliant, and he said he'd had such bad luck, you know, but he'd come all the way from Lithuania and learned how to speak beautiful English. Yes. How he did that, I don't know. Uh -huh. Very clever person. I liked him very much. You were very, very close. And he was a great actor. I was talking to his ex-wife, Joan Cohn, mm -hmm. not so very long ago, and she's always been so fair about him and decent about him. You see, people respected him in a way because he was be becoming such a good actor. Actor, yes. He really, he, he really mm. wanted to be... I was very, very fond of him. We have that in America now. We have a young man by... He was on Dr. Kildare. Yeah. And he, I think he's doing the same image as, uh, yeah. do you see it? Do you see yes, it? Yes, he Am I correct? He seems doing that. Yeah. Yes, he's trying because to. Because some people see this happening, and sometimes it's a great success. Yeah, he went to London. He studied at RADA. Yes, I think he did. He gave up that series, Dr. Kildare, and came back and just become a very good actor. He's oh, really, that's he's, splendid. He's really very good. I but love what him. about that wonderful Mr. Chamberlain? <laughs> Richard Chamberlain, uh, that's right. How he went to London, everybody said he'll get into scalding water, you uh -huh, know, with uh -huh. uh, uh, Shakespeare. You uh -huh. yeah, and this boy just takes Hamlet uh -huh. and gets the most priceless recognition. Uh, Hermione, tell me something. You were married twice? You were married to a, a society, society see. life in Le England. I was you only really married once. Really? Oh, well, uh, what's the two, where, where's the other one come from? Well, I always say, and you'll see in my book, I say, I always feel I was only married once because <laughs> I don't approve of six and seven marriages uh -huh. at all. But my husband, we parted, we drifted apart happily, uh -huh. and then we, we missed each other terribly. And after a few years, I hated the war and everything, and... Uh, my poor husband. What did he do? Your he first was husband. a hero, literally, at uh, Dunkirk. Uh -huh. He got a double MC, and then uh, his boys all got medals, yeah. right through uh -huh. his squadron. So he was a dear thing, but I didn't really want to marry him. And he said, but you haven't got a husband, and you must leave London while these bombs are dropping. Uh -huh. But of course, I wasn't going to do that. 
but I liked the thought of going to a, a, a uh, place in the country. Mm -hmm. How many, ch you, you did go so to the I country? So I said, I'll marry you for, for a year while it's convenient. <laughs> 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 So you got away from London, you went to your castle in well, the country? Well, no, no, I went and played for the troops. for two In North Africa? In North Africa. Oh, yes, Seven yes. countries we went. Oh, and I left the whole thing. And Hermione and Gingo, of course, said, oh, no, I can't be left alone, you know, at first. And then <laughs> she took my whole thing when Hermione I got back. And Tony was in, uh, Tony Gingo was always, almost in my place. But... Uh, and nobody seemed to know one went uh -huh. to North Africa, Italy, everywhere, you yeah. know. And I was very quite tired when one got back after a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And people, and the girls in the chorus and things used to say, oh, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> Only nearly killing ourselves. Uh -huh. Hermione, there are only two Hermione's in our business, in show business. Hermione mm -hmm. Ginko Gingo. and Hermione Badley. Now tell me about Hermione Gingo and you. I mean, a lot of people get you confused. Oh, uh, it's a rather it's pity there. <laughs> yes. No, but the thing is this, that she was, I think, with television. Uh -huh. She was married to Eric Nash. Right, right. And then um, I had become absolutely settled mm -hmm. as sort of number one uh, review artist at this little, little tiny theater. Yes, yes. And a great, great genius wrote for me called um, Herbert Forge. Uh -huh. And I was just stuck at this theater. Uh -huh. It went on for two years. Uh -huh. and, so. uh -huh. and the Gingo suddenly appeared from somewhere. Uh -huh. And a great fan of mine said, let's go and see her for fun. Uh -huh. um, he, Sir Alfred Wright, he was very, very, very keen on that. Wishy reviews and things. Uh -huh. And he said, if this woman's going to take from me, it's she going to copy you. I'm sure be furious. Uh -huh. So we went and we took Dougie Bing with us, who was a very funny person in England, a uh -huh. uh, male com comedian. And uh, he comes with us. <laughs> and he suddenly says in a very squeaky voice, She's copying me, not you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> we all love to speak, you see. Uh -huh. But she's copying me, dear, not you. Well, anyway, the, the war was very, very depressing mm -hmm. when I came back. Uh -huh. And I said, Hermione, come into this next review. I said, you're uh -huh. going to do one. Because she'd done one with the Norman Marshall, I think. Yes, it yes. And it had gone very well, but the... the, the, the little place was like a room you mm -hmm. see it wasn't big enough uh -huh. and then she came with me into a war review wartime review uh -huh. called rise above it rise and above it was it a musical tremendous hit yes a musical mm -hmm. yeah rise above it then we did um, sky high we, we then did three about three reviews so you did her. work with her then. oh did i worked with her three reviews, uh -huh. I sort of took her into right, my right. camp. I see. And then we did uh, Fallen Angels. I see. And that was just, uh, nobody yeah. talked of anything else. Uh -huh. It was the mixture of the two of us in I that see. that I did see. something, because it ha had been on before, you know, mm -hmm. with Edna Baird. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But you know? And to Lula Bank. And to Lula And it wasn't very, it was very poor. That was in London? Yeah. It was. When did you first come to America? With, uh, but you did. Martin's Theatre. You mean. did something for Tennessee Williams when you first came, was it? Oh, or yes. Was it? But that was the. You see, I've had. I mean, the I love train, this country, but I've had such bad luck there. Yes, the milk train. No, no, no. Get back. That bad luck. What do you mean by bad luck? Well, uh, real bad luck. Like what? Like. When you first uh, arrived. Oh, not when I first arrived. Oh, okay. I first arrived because I was nominated, and I only stayed. You were nominated for the room at, at the, the top. top. Yeah, that's right. right. But I had no intention of staying. Right. I, uh, because I was in New York and uh, doing a play, but I didn't think I'd stay. So what was your first Hollywood. play when you arrived here in New York? Was it for Tennessee? Oh, the first play, no. The first play was A Taste of Honey. Honey, wonderful play. Yes. And that play ran, and, and then yes. it went on tour. Uh -huh. And it was when I was on tour with it that Tennessee came to see me in it. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've got a play for you. Oh. He calls you. 
the one of the four uh, best actresses yeah. in the Jerry, world. Yeah, Jerry Woodman, that's, yeah. That's what he calls you. I knew Tom very well. He was a marvelous man, wasn't he? Oh, awesome. Tell us about Tennessee Williams, the day, oh, he, the day he came to you and said. I think he's the most enchanting man you could ever meet. Uh -huh. And you would think with that sort of author, he might be troublesome or say, don't do this this way. You know, some of the well-known ones uh -huh. rather criticize everyone. But I don't know, he was so sweet to me. I just, well, I think as a, just as a person to be with, he's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know him well, I Sense expect. of humor, sense of humor. Great everything sense of humor. Was funny. Yes, everything. He had a great sense I of humor. We were in Bangkok together, and he oh, was well, entertaining. And he was me. wonderful. He just had a great sense of oh. humor. And the sad part was that he was fond of this play, and I got a sort of reception, like the opera gets there, yes, you know, yes. Spalletta, where we opened. I couldn't believe it. Huh? And then Tennessee introduced me to Anna Magnani. He said, You, Jerry. You, Jerry Page, <laughs> and Anna Magnani yeah, are favorite the greatest too. actresses. Yeah. He Is said, I won't say anything about anyone else. He loved Anna Magnani and Geraldine Page. Yeah, and that, I joined them. Wasn't that a great compliment that Geraldine Page won the awards oh, this year? I'm so happy. I was so relieved. Uh, how did you feel? Really? Because she, I got to know her, you see, because we both at the... Um, Shadow Mom, Mom, yes. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yes. We had great fun. She's a wonderful And I girl. liked her so much. Tell me about Maud. What happened to Maud? Maud? I mean, uh, yeah, Maud. Deep yeah. mystery. None I mean, of us know. I mean, really, when did, I mean, what happened? How did you get into that show? That series? Oh, how wonderful. did I get yes. into it? I want to know. I turned it down. At the beginning, you turned yes. it down? Yes. Uh, they wouldn't. You see, I came over, really. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the whole thing's rather long time. It's difficult to explain. We'll make it short, but, but that's... Walt Disney engaged me to come to Hollywood mm -hmm. on a... He said, I'll only keep you uh, not a, a, a bit more than uh -huh. a year, I think he said, to get the rights of Mrs. Alice Goes to Paris. Right. You see, he wanted the rights and he wanted to really plunge me on the screen. He mm -hmm. really he did. did. Walt, the, uh, the Mary Hopkins. Yeah. You were in Mary Hopkins. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins, yes. I mean, yeah, right. And also that yes. Happiest Millionaire. But what a I movie that was. I wasn't supposed to be in any of uh -huh, those. Uh -huh. I just came to do Mrs. Aris Goes to Paris. Right. Because he'd seen me as a char lady, and he said, that little character must be on the screen. Uh -huh. So I did wait a whole year while he argued to r with Ray Stark and very difficult people to get the, yeah. the rights. Mm -hmm. He had no right. Uh -huh. So finally he came to me and said, Hermione, I've won. I've had to pay an awful lot. I've got to pay an awful lot. But I've got the rights. Uh -huh. He got them from some actors. And said, oh, rows of people. Uh -huh. He paid a lot. One month and one day or two after that, there was a day that came, and everybody said, Walt Disney's dead. Wasn't it awful? Uh -huh. It was the biggest shock for all that, those numbers of people mm -hmm. that he was employing. employing yes. So I felt like I didn't know what to feel, because I couldn't be fond of him, because I hadn't Met him. Yes. been working yes, with uh -huh. him. But this wonderful little man had this all worked out for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it sad? Mm -hmm. Maud came then? That's when it came? Well, I went home. I, I had a house. And uh, I went straight home. I had no intention of staying. Mm -hmm. And then they, they wrote and said, was I thinking of coming back? And I said, I didn't think so. I'd had such a shock. Because you really want to be presented as I was yes. in, in England, as yes. saw. Of course. And he meant to do that, you see. Yes. But uh, he died. Yes. That was my luck. I do think that's bad luck, though, don't you? That's what you call bad luck. Oh, that's don't what you, you meant. Yes, yes, yes. And so then I, I came back to sell my house. Uh, um, and I only stayed at the chateau for a week. And Norman Lear rang up. 
and my agent said, would you go and see him? And I said, there's no point in going to see him uh -huh. because I've got a 14-week um, novel I had to do mm -hmm. on the screen, you see. Yes. It only took 14 weeks, but mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a book to and put on the screen, mm -hmm. you see. And it so you met Norman Lear. So I met Norman right. there. Uh -huh. And B. Arthur, did you meet B. Uh, before? While I was doing my, and I put, I said, I can't see Norman Lear at first. Uh -huh. I said, I'm swimming. <laughs> <laughs> and I put on a filthy old cap. And he said, but just see Norman Lear. And then I went to the place, and of course there's room, nothing but writers. Yes. And I said, I'm very busy, I catch my plane now. Mm -hmm. And 14 weeks to that day, he rang me up. After that, uh -huh. I parted from them, but I felt so awful going uh -huh. with all my hair. Right, away. right, right. And they wanted you for that part. For that part, the tipsy little maid. He said that, and of course it rather gobbled. The and that's when the American people really discovered oh, yes, her mighty badly, because yes. you know. People but out in Kansas City, Kansas City and Missouri don't go to the theater to Aren't see Hermione really? Badley and Shakespeare. Yeah. So they <laughs> sit at home and watch the television. Yeah, that's where that's they discovered lovely. you, darling. Yeah. But you, do you know, Hermione, I want to tell you something. We have a gentleman who wrote, you know, you know him very well. He's English, too. And, but he's, I think he grew up in Australia. Did and he? Yeah, he grew up in Australia, darling. I and he, he wrote, oh, wonderful books, Betty Davis' Life Story. Yes. Orson Welles, Earl Flynn's new mo Just book. Just like that. He he's, does them And he's good friends, and he's very close to my favorite lady. Oh, God, Which she lives one? in Paris, and she's up. Which one? He'll tell us. Hermione <laughs> Gingo, I like you to <laughs> Charles Heim, where are you? Hello, Charles. Nice to have you here. here. Let me help you with this, Thank Charles. You. I think we'll you just zip you over you. here. Hi. How here, just push this, Charles. Sure. Just do that. How have you been, Charles Heim? Very well, thank Tell you. Tell me, what's new? I'd like to see her in again. Yes. What's new? Daughter. What's new and exciting in Charles Heim's life? I mean, you've got a new book, Lucille Ball. I have indeed, coming out at the oh. same time as her new, revived Lucy series. Right. Which oh. will be airing, I understand, in October. Uh-huh. And with any luck, the book should appear the same day her first telecast Appears. Well, it Lovely. wasn't actually. It uh -huh. was it was a complete accident because I had embarked on the book quite some time before the announcement, and just by a fluke, mm -hmm. um, this decision was made by Aaron Spelling uh -huh. um, to go ahead. And of course, it was an inspired idea of his yes. to have Lucy come back at this uh -huh. stage in her career uh -huh. and be Lucy again um, cool. all these years yes. later. <laughs> she is. And I think um, Spelling is has an amazing knack of grasping public taste and putting his finger on the pulse. Uh -huh. He had this, I think, incredible cleverness, first of all, in launching Dynasty, making Joan Collins, whom we both know, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> a super kind of bitch star. The I ultimate mean, let's face Joan it, Crawford yes. of our time. Yes, yes, um, yes. Enormously stylized, wonderfully wicked. Mm -hmm. and glamorously <laughs> attractive, attractive yeah. I think and she, she looks better now than she did 30 years ago. You're right. I think she's extraordinary. Yes. And she's then gorgeous. she's just amazing. And so I guess we British are somehow surviving. Charles, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> not not you, Charles uh, j let's uh, just a little back in your career, yes. I mean your life. Yes. You know, people don't know, but Charles Hines started with uh, you, uh, New York Times. You were working for the New York Times it's true. and doing interviews for all the big stars, yes. like Dietrich, who I was talking about, lives yeah, in Paris. Yeah. Yes, you indeed. Did, you're very close to Dietrich. Yes, and I did her biography, mm -hmm. and um, we got to know each other extremely well. Uh -huh. She is probably one of the three or four most remarkable women I've ever known. She has the discipline of, she's the daughter of a policeman uh -huh. And when you're with her, you're well aware of it. Oh, <laughs> are, <laughs> are, you, are you really? <laughs> because she is <laughs> the most disciplined person uh -huh. I have ever met. Uh -huh. And if you're one second early or one uh -huh. second late for an uh -huh. appointment, uh -huh. you hear about it the rest uh -huh. of the night. Have you mm -hmm. met her, uh, Hermione? Yes. Yes? Once or twice. You feel the same way? Well, you see, we had uh, this thing in London, the uh, Night of a Hundred Stars. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Ernest yes. Stars. Yes. And it was simply wonderful because We'd be in a corner, 
Lars är doing short dance. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he came in once when Larry was in the middle of practicing a dance. And she made somebody say, uh, Miss Dietrich is here. Yeah, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and she also practicing. used to have people engaged to bring flowers to the stage. And uh -huh. she was a little bit tight with Manny at one time. <laughs> So they would bring back the same bouquet, uh -huh. would be delivered to the stage, uh -huh. they would go all the way around behind the stage uh -huh. and out again into the audience and bring back the same bouquet. And somebody <laughs> wondered oh, why this was so, and they asked her about oh. it, um, and she said, oh no, it's just that her favorite flowers were tuberoses. So oh, of course they all have to be the same. Right, yes, right, right. absolutely. Charles, uh, tell me about one. Betty Davis. Oh. I mean, Betty Davis, so you wrote that one. Did you read that book he wrote about Betty Davis? Oh, is yeah. it true? Is it really? It is, is it really? It's always true, it's Skippy. Always. always. Now, how do you get your, how do you, how do you do your research on these well, people? Well, first of all, the first thing I do is I don't go to uh, columnists. I don't go to press clippings. I don't go to old magazines. Because quite honestly, the, the, as Hermione knows, the press agents and publicists yeah. not only made up the stories, but oh. often placed them in the magazines. True, true. So what I do is I go to studio records, ah. where day-to-day -day uh, records are taken of every production. Uh -huh. In other words, everything that happens on a set, if Miss Davis got a cold on Thursday morning at 10.30, it would be recorded. I see. And interestingly enough, in, because of the legal matters of dealing with stars, uh -huh. Everything was done by telegram and not by telephone call in those days, mm -hmm. in the great days of Hollywood. Yes. So that you have a record, if Ms. Davis tells Jack Warner where he gets off uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> in a telegram, uh -huh. as only she can do, uh -huh. <laughs> it's in a long uh -huh. telegram uh -huh. that probably is the length of War and Peace. Yes, yes, yes. And at the end of it, you have a very clear picture uh -huh. of what she thought of Jack Warner. I see. I see. New York yeah. Times. Let's get back to New York yes. Times. I was jumping yeah. ahead. I want to know, <laughs> you started with the New York Times. Yes, yes. When did you first come to our country? I came here in 1971, and within six weeks, I was working for the New York Times on the West Coast. I was one of their two or three correspondents. Uh -huh. And um, it's interesting because Seymour Peck, who was the genius behind the arts and leisure section, the Sunday yes. theater section, which is all powerful, as you know, Yes. Um, he had hired Clive Barnes. He had a weakness for English people. Uh -huh. And as soon as I walked in, um, I think he felt that, I, I don't know why, Rex Reed had decided to leave the paper. Yes. And he needed somebody else. And whether it was my accent or something I said, I don't know. But I was rather bewildered because uh -huh. without any preparation, uh -huh. quite unable to drive, I had not mastered the art of yes. automobiles in uh -huh. Los Angeles, Goodness. I suddenly right. found myself uh, walking to the stars, the stars. Right, in right, Beverly right. Hills. Because you, you don't drive. Taxi you or drive. bus or whatever. Did, yes, yeah. And I didn't. I had the same I way. wasn't same at way. all ready to pack uh -huh. up and come here. Uh -huh. um, like but Hermione, that was, the like best Hermione was telling us earlier yes, about yes. how she Plum, yes. was ready to plunge into you it. Know, suddenly. And I think it's because, I think if I'd thought about it, yes. um, I would have been so petrified I couldn't have done it because I'd never interviewed yeah. a star in my life. Uh -huh. But yeah. I suddenly found myself off the deep end of the swimming pool in a high dive, uh -huh. and I thought, the thing is, just go with the tide. Yes. Um, because if you walk into the homes of Barbara Streisand or Dinah Shaw, you, you really, <laughs> if you think about it for a moment, yes. as a newcomer to this country, it's rather overpowering. Yes, yes. And perhaps Power, they, yeah. this, uh, yeah. perhaps this rather countryfied philosophy appealed to the New York Times. Charles Hyam. <laughs> yes, it did. Charles Hyam, tell me something. I want to know about Rick, Earl Flynn. Aren't I rogue, yes. <laughs> Earl Flynn. Oh, yes. Tell me about that book. You, well, is that now you're really opening a very, very nasty can of worms, Skippy, and I, I hope your, I <laughs> your viewers about are Earl ready Flynn. for is it. Is it true? Well, of course it's true. We already discussed that earlier in the program. Okay, I just want, I didn't um, know. I just first of all, it's not only true, but <sighs> if I can be serious a moment, I yes. was raised in a very political family. My father, Sir Charles Hyam, was a member of parliament and Sir Charles very close, yes, yes, and a very Sir. close friend of Winston Churchill. Our family was strongly opposed to Britain appeasing with Nazi Germany. I was a child of the Blitz. I grew up in the Blitz, and my first memories are of people being scattered about, you know, bombings and so forth. Yes. And so I think that when I stumbled on by accident the fact that Errol Flynn, while fighting the Nazis on the screen, 
was helping them in private, was involved deeply with the Nazi cause. Oh, it came as such a shock to me as an Englishman that I thought, I had two thoughts. One was to abandon the book completely, forget about it, bury it somewhere in a back file, because I knew I'd get a lot of flack over this yes, from his yes, fans. Of course. Or else, um, because I came from a patriotic family, because I had seen the Blitz as my first memories in London, yes. I felt a duty to go ahead and expose this man for what he truly was, not in a spirit of um, the National Enquirer or sensationalism, I understand. but purely in a purely political sense, I felt that it was very interesting that he had used the industry's money, had used oh. his position, mm -hmm. and especially since the industry is, like myself, Jewish, yes, yes. Um, the, oh, the feeling was very strong in me that he'd been protected. Yes, yes. And I didn't like that, and I felt that the truth should be told, and of course, it set a, the cat among the pigeons. There was yes. a tremendous uproar, yes. and people yes, said it's yes. absolutely impossible. Yes. But rather than go on about this forever, I'd like to say this briefly to yes. your viewers. Yeah. Um, if anyone is interested in the Errol Flynn matter, fan or enemy, they should go to my collection of papers at the University of Southern California, uh -huh. because there are 7,000 pages of Errol Flynn's Nazi associations I from see. the FBI, the State Department, uh -huh. the Naval Intelligence people, mm -hmm. and every aspect of government, and they can see it uh -huh. for themselves, and it'll give them a hair-raising shock. I see. Because, don't forget, in my book I dealt with a thousand other aspects of his life. Yes. I dealt with his criminal connections, I dealt with his um, swashbuckling activities, right. his sailing, his yes. love of the sea, even his writing. Yes. But yes. Uh, no, he was a many-faceted person, but mm. Um, that mass of documents is probably the most shocking experience I've uh -huh. ever had in my life as I a writer, uh -huh. and I hope never to have anything like that again. Mm -hmm. Orson Welles. An this extraordinary, is the new Extraordinary genius. He was a genius. And I have something rather exciting to tell you. Yes. Um, I compiled for the first time ever his family tree, back to the Mayflower. He was descended directly mm -hmm. from five people on the Mayflower, including oh. John Alden, the most famous of all, uh -huh. who was played, you remember, by Van Johnson yes. in Plymouth Adventure. Yes, yes. And just the day before he died, his assistant, Gary Graver, took to him a blown up copy of the family tree. Oh, no. And he was thrilled and, and uh, excited <laughs> out of his mind that someone had traced him to the Mayflower. He had no idea he came from the Mayflower. And, Skippy, I do not really? lie, this was the yes. last thing Orson Welles ever found out. I want to tap this picture what right there. Can you get this, zoom it in for me? Orson Welles, and Orson Welles as a little boy on a horse. Can you get that? That's it. Is that it? How old was he there, Joan? He was only yeah, ten. Charles, ten. And he was marvelous. And he, only ten. he was a genius at the age of eight because he was writing poetry plays, uh -huh. painting, sculpting, and telling everyone where they got off. But you're doing Brando now. You're yes. a researcher Brando. Marlon I am Brando. deeply involved in it. With Brando. Oh, that yes. must be interesting. Isn't that interesting? He's such a sort of mystery in a way. Yes, did he is. Did you know him? Uh, did you meet him? Uh, uh, no. I'd, well, I think I probably met him once in mm -hmm. a studio, uh -huh. but I know nothing about him. It's, uh, a, it's an he electrifying... Lived next door. He lives here now. I understand, <laughs> I understand <laughs> his islands are oh, for really? sale. Well, when I was uh, that big, big house of rent, uh, but yes. it went just up the road. Well, and Holland Drive. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Skip V. Low Looks at Hollywood. From Hollywood, New York, London, Paris, and Rome, the international jet setter, Miss Monique Van Vorn. Also, the gentleman who not only owns one beautiful hotel, not two beautiful hotels, but five beautiful hotels right here in